Good day you wonderful skiers. In this video we're gonna learn how to find our perfect turn shape for our abilities and skis. Let's get started. Let's learn about turn shape because there's more to it than just the radius that says on your skis. First one up is the long turning radius. This is very fast because you spend a long time at the fall line and turning. It's not only dependent on your ski but also your edge angle. Today I'm on a slalom ski so it makes it easy for me to do a short radius turn. But to be honest, it's more than just like a half circle to turn, but a turn is a parabola where it has the shortest radius where you have the highest edge angle and pressure helps a little bit too. And this type of turn is a little slower. Here's an example of a decent turn shape. Radius, approximately 13 meters perhaps, at a pretty long arc length, meaning I'm following this circle along it for a rather long time. Next bit to turn shape is arc length. So a long arc length is slow because you ski a long time across the hill where you're slowing down. And uh, you can think of it if you're like following a circle halfway around the turn or only like the middle quarter or so. A short arc length, it's obviously going to be very fast because you're facing down the fall line at all times. And in the rest of this video, we're gonna explore how to achieve like the perfect turnship for you. And this is gonna feel something like this. The arc length sweet spot is the place where you hold on to the edge long enough that you get to achieve really high edge angles. And you hold on long enough that you really feel some G-forces as gravity is crushing you against your skis and you go swooshing out into the next turn. It feels great, so it's worth exploring. If you really want to up your skiing, join us at Stompit Camps, where we combine the latest technology from Carb, so we measure your progress together with level four instructors, push your skiing as far as possible. I bet some of the people skiing down here behind me are doing what I call the straight line incliner. Uh, yeah, red pants, yes. Red jacket, yes. They might be carving cleanly, but they're basically just tipping from one side to the next, having a turn shape that has a very short arc length and a very large radius, making them ski too fast for their abilities. Blue jacket, yes, but skidding, not carving really. And I bet all these people are lovely people and they deserve to feel how rad a carve turn can be. Uh, black, white jacket, green. To have the amazing feelings you need for a carve turn, you need to keep inclining like you are. Ah, oh, and the other green there too. But then you need to crank in that angulation at the apex and your skis are gonna go wha-pow! Send you into the next turn and it's one of the raddest feelings there are. I'd say about four out of five are doing this, so pay attention to it. Oh, I hate it. Never again. For you, Mr. Straight Line Incliner, let's have a little tactical fix. All you have to do first is to know what I've been teaching you about arc length. Yours is tiny right now, so make it longer. And that's going to slow you down a little bit. And this simple change to your skiing is probably going to allow you to both incline and angulate a little bit. Just making the arc length longer is probably making you better, but we still got to add some technical fixes to your skiing to make it a whole lot better with a sword drill. You gotta grab your poles like that, and then we go. So, you already got a good habit of starting to incline into the turn, the incline, and then you start dragging the outside poles. And remember, I have quite a long arc length, and it feels amazing. That's just 
edge angles are increasing, so are the G-forces and their singly tummy feeling. Yes! Woo! Ah, oh, such a good little drill that one. But you look a little silly like that. Although the sword drill is ideal, you don't want to ski around like that all day long. So the other way to do this is just by holding your poles normal and then try to drag a little bit at the apex to the lower third of the turn like this. So incline, drag it. Incline, drag it. Here at the apex, ooh. It just feels so much better than those straight line incline attempts. Ah, oh, so good. Whee! To wrap up the straight line incliner, knowing the theoretical stuff about increasing the arc length so you get to feel those amazing g-forces in combination with continuing doing the inclination on the top third and then cranking in some angulation i think you can up your skiing a lot now to the next common mistake which is the angulator i used to be one of those even if it sounds cool it's not that cool to just rely on angulation you know where you kind of get this kink between the upper body and the lower because if you only have that without the inclination, you also cannot get maximum edge angle and feel those G-forces go swoosh. And it's not only angulation that's the issue, it's that they make very large turns with very, really closing the turns, but like stuck on the same position all day long. Oh, here's a straight line incliner again. I just like bam, on the angulation, stays there. Bam, angulation, staying there all day. Oh, it's so unsatisfying. I have to stop skiing like that immediately. I understand a lot of people ski the angulated way. I used to be guilty of it too, and still am sometimes, I guess, um, because it limits you from really getting higher edge angles. Because if you incline first, then angulate, you'll achieve much greater edge angles. But um, I understand many do it also because of speed control. And you'd be surprised what would happen if you shorten the arc length a fair bit and you start inclining and angulating, you'll achieve greater edge angle, meaning shorter turning radius, which means that will also slow you down. But also the shorter arc length is gonna make you do a larger number of turns for a given uh, length of slope. We need to learn how to topple or incline into the turn, which yep, not so good at yet. So imagine I'm finishing one turn here. I'm done here, angulated nice. This is the easiest to feel if you're standing up tall. Do a so-called crossover where I go up really high and then really tip down the mountain before you crank in that angulation. Let's combine the topple or inclination, angulation, which will give us a short turning radius. It's easy to do when you have a really high position and then you just fall, topple over like a tree in the forest. And then you crank in that angulation. You can actually drag that outside ski pole a little bit as well for added benefit. Now for the second drill, we're gonna make it a little bit more challenging but actually lifting up the outside leg at the top to force us to really topple down the hill and then put it down gently, roughly at the fall line with some angulation. So it's going to do two things. It's going to remind us to incline and it's going to remind us to angulate. All right, let's do it. Up, up and then down. Up. pursuit of the perfect turn shape, I suggest you with a friend can go and do some video analysis yourself and see what looks good. As an example, I'm gonna use Carve's video mode and we're gonna see how my ski IQ looks different for the different turn shapes. We got the straight line incliner, the angulator, and then I'm gonna try to do a turn shape that's around about my sweet spot for these skis. So you can see in the beginning here on my turns where I'm doing the straight line incliner. Like I got a 120 in ski IQ perhaps. It looks boring and then I start doing the angulator moves and yeah the score is really plateauing at like 130 it just doesn't go up much more 
And then here, when I start to be more dynamic than what Carve wants to see, more like the way they see on TV, inclined and angulate, you see that I'm never really in the same position for an extended period of time. I'm just influencing the radius of those turns. So I'm like inclined, angulate, meaning I get those nice parabola shaped turns. So uh, that's what my turn shape looks and ski IQ. A fantastic way to find your perfect turn shape for your skis and your ability is to do a classic funnel drill where you make large turns and then gradually make them smaller and smaller and try to feel for a turn shape that you feel comfortable and where you feel increasing and decreasing the edge angle. It feels great. You need a large slope like this one to do it where there's not so many people to make it easy. There's a second cool funnel drill you can do, which is called the hourglass funnel. Just like it says, you start like the last one and then go narrow and remember to stay in the middle for a while and feel the tighter one. And then you ease into a larger turn that feels good. So it's on the second half of this drill, that's where you might find your perfect turn shape. Funnel top tip have a large amount of space. So you really have time to make both large, medium and small turns. This is crucial. Funnel top tip. Remember what we talked about earlier in the video, incline and then boost on with that angulation. It's also crucial while doing these funnel drills. Funnel top tip. Have a cameraman stand at the bottom of the run, ideally in the middle of the slope. So you really get the shape of the funnel. And then you can look for little clues for where do your turn look really nice and you have a flowing performance where you gradually increase and decrease that edge angle. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned a few useful tips. If you want to continue learning, check out the videos up there or join a camp where we got amazing level four instructors teaching you to carve and shorten everything basically. Write a comment if you want to learn more and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.